Hi all, welcome back to our YouTube channel. In this video, we are going to learn about modular arithmetic. So let's get started. In the previous video, we covered additive cipher. The next monoalphabetic cipher is multiplicative cipher. But in order to understand that cipher, we require some mathematical background. So let's understand them. The first mathematical concept that we need to understand is congruence. Let's have a look at its definition. So let A, B and N be integers and if a mod n is equal to b mod n, then a is congruent to b mod n. Here, this symbol represents the symbol of congruence. Let's have an example to understand it. Here, n is equal to 8, a is equal to 10, and b is 18. First, we calculate a mod n, that is 10 mod 8, which is equal to 2. Then we calculate b mod n, which is 18 mod 8, which is again is equal to 2. So we can see that a mod n is equal to b mod n. Therefore, 10 is congruent to 18 mod 8. Here a that is 10 is congruent to b that is 18 mod n that is mod 8. And this expression is similar to this expression. Also we know that the modulus operator gives us the remainder. So the remainder of the first operation is 2 as well as the remainder of the second operation is 2. This means a and b share the same remainder and this is with respect to the mod n operator, which in this case is mod 8. And that's the significance of congruence. It represents numbers that share the same remainder with respect to the mod n operator. I know it's a bit heavy on maths, but let's simplify this by comparing with the well-known equality operator. So let's compare both this operation. Also remember that when we use congruence in cryptography, it is always with respect to a mod n. And that's the mathematical convention followed here. So here the input is common for both that are a set of integers. In case of equality, the output is also a set of integers. However, in the case of congruence, the output is ZN, which is a set of integers from 0 to n-1. minus In equality, every element is mapped to itself. Let's take some example to understand this. So minus 2 is equal to minus 2. 4 is equal to 4. So this is a 1 to 1 mapping. If this is a set that represents the input that is Z, and this is a set that represents the output, then it is 1 to 1 mapping, that is minus 2 is mapped to minus 2, 4 is mapped to 4. However, in the case of congruence, elements are mapped to the common remainder. Let's take an example to understand this. So consider 10 mod 8 is equal to 2, and 18 mod 8 is equal to 2. So this implies that 10 is congruent to 18 mod 8. Now both these numbers that are 10 and 18 are mapped to the remainder 2 and hence it is many to one mapping. Let's visualize this. So this is the input that is set of integers and this represents the output that is Zn and it contains numbers from 0 to n minus 1. So your 10 is mapped to 2, also 18 is mapped to 2. So it is a many to one mapping. And that is the whole concept of congruence that if two numbers are congruent to each other with respect to mod n, then they share the same remainder and all the remainders are from set Zn. So in a nutshell, congruence is a many to one mapping from Z to Zn. I have tried my best to simplify this concept as much as possible and I hope it's clear. If you have any doubts, please let us know in the comment section. Now let's understand modular arithmetic. Let's start with the addition operation. So consider an integer a that belongs to Zn and another integer b that also belongs to Zn. So we want to perform an addition operation, then we have to apply the mod operator so that the output will also belong to Zn. Let's understand this using an example. So consider n as 20, a as 30 and b as 15. And we want to perform addition of a plus b. And that is performed using the formula a plus b is equal to a plus b mod n. That is equal to 30 plus 15 mod 20. Now 30 plus 15 is 45, so it becomes 45 mod 20 which is equal to 5. So this is how we perform addition operation in modular arithmetic. Now let's understand the distributive property of the mod operator in addition. So here we can distribute the mod operator over the addition operation. So we can apply a mod n plus b mod n, but again we have to apply the mod n operator so that the output is in the Zn set. Let's understand using an example. Let's take the same example as before that is n is 20, a is 30 and b is 15. We want to perform the addition operation. So the formula is a plus b equal to a plus b mod n. Then we apply the distributive property that is a mod n plus b mod n the whole mod n. That is equal to 30 mod 20 
plus 15 mod 20 mod 20. Now 30 mod 20 gives us 10 and 15 mod 20 gives us 15. Then finally we have 25 mod 20 which is again 5. We can see both the output are same that is 5 and hence the distributive property holds true. Now let's understand additive inverse. So two integers a and b that belongs to zn are additive inverse of each other if a plus b is congruent to 0 mod n. That means a plus b mod n should be 0 and if it is true then b is the additive inverse of a and vice versa. And the formula for calculating the additive inverse of an integer a is b equal to minus a mod n. Also an important note that each integer has an additive inverse. Let's take an example. So here the example is to find the additive inverse of 8 in z15. So your a is 8 and n is 15. And the formula to calculate the additive inverse of a is b equal to minus a mod n. So your b is equal to minus 8 mod 15. Here since we are calculating mod of a negative number, we just add 15 to it that is minus 8 plus 15 which gives us 7. So 7 is the additive inverse of 8 in z15. Now let's understand the next operation that is multiplication. So consider an integer a that belongs to zn and another integer b that also belongs to zn and we want to perform multiplication operation. So similar to addition operation, we have to apply the mod operator so that the output is within zn. Let's take an example to understand this. So your n is 20, a is 3 and b is 15 and we want to perform the multiplication operation. So a into b is equal to a into b mod n that is equal to 3 into 15 mod 20. So 15 3 is a 45 that becomes 45 mod 20 which results as 5. Similar to the addition operation here we also have the distributive property. So a into b mod n is equal to a mod n into b mod n the whole mod n. Let's take the previous example that is n is equal to 20, a is 3 and b is 15 and we want to perform the multiplication of a and b. So we use the distributive property of mod over multiplication and it becomes a mod n into b mod n the whole mod n. So it is 3 mod 20 into 15 mod 20 the whole mod 20. So 3 mod 20 gives us 3 and 15 mod 20 gives us 15. Then we have 45 mod 20 which gives us the same output. So we can see both the results are same so the distributive property holds true. And finally let's understand the multiplicative inverse. So two integers a and b are multiplicative inverse of each other if a into b is congruent to 1 mod n and gcd of a and n is 1. So here there are two conditions that must be satisfied. Also note that an integer may or may not have a multiplicative inverse. And how to know whether a multiplicative inverse of an integer a exists or not. And this is where the second condition comes. And this condition is known as the condition of existence of multiplicative inverse. So if this condition is not satisfied then multiplicative inverse for a does not exist with respect to mod n and if it is satisfied then it does exist. And there is not a straightforward formula like that in additive inverse that gives us the multiplicative inverse of a number. To calculate the multiplicative inverse of a number there is an algorithm that is called as extended Euclidean algorithm which is used to find it. So this we will cover in the next video along with some examples to understand it properly. So that's it for the video guys, thanks for watching the video and if you have any doubt please do let us know in the comment section below and if you have found the video helpful then do like and share the video with your friends and subscribe to be the best channel for more such videos. Meet you in the next video of the CSC series, bye bye.